Hey, good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church in Midtown, Kansas City. It is Monday. Uh, I am late in starting our Facebook live post for our daily devotion. My apologies for that, but uh, I hope that maybe some of you are getting a notification on this and will join me today. Uh, as you do, if you leave a quick comment and say hello, I would appreciate you doing that. If you are someone who watches this later on, don't forget to leave your comment and say hello as well. Oh, well, that's funny. Here's a little coincidence for you. Our Bible reading for today comes out of Matthew chapter 18. And guess where the ribbon for my Bible was? Not there on purpose. <laughs> so... Good morning, Barbara and Chris Mueller. Good morning, Shirley. Great to see all of you. Glad you are here today. It's a beautiful morning here in Kansas City. Bright and sunny today. Hi, Jan. Good morning to you. Matthew chapter 18 is where we're reading today. Matthew chapter 18. We're reading verses 10 through 14, by the way. Matthew chapter 18, verses 10 through 14. I was a couple of minutes late, so my apologies. All right, here's our prayer, friends. It is, O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. Matthew chapter 18, verses 10 through 14 is the parable of the lost sheep. See that you don't look down on one of these little ones, because I tell you that in heaven their angels continually view the face of my Father in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to save the lost. What do you think? If a man has 100 sheep and one of them goes astray, won't he leave the 99 on the hillside and go and search for the stray? And if he finds it, I assure you, he rejoices over that sheep more than the other 99 that don't go astray. In the same way, it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. That, uh, by the way, comes right after um, James and um, uh, John um, ask about who's the greatest in heaven. So the disciples come and ask who's the greatest in heaven and Jesus calls the children and says, anyone who's like a little child, right? Okay, so our devotion writer is Stephen E. Freeman from Virginia. Uh, his focus verse is Luke chapter 15, verses four to six. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. So that's Luke's version of what Matthew uh, has just shared with us. And here is Stephen's devotion for today. After attending a football game on a beautiful fall afternoon, my wife Cecilia and I became frustrated with the wait time for shuttle buses back to the parking lot. So we decided to hike to our car. It was a nice day and we wanted some exercise. We tried a shortcut through a wooded area, but ended up in an unfamiliar parking lot. We were weary. We were lost. Suddenly, a golf cart pulled up, driven by a stadium attendant, who asked if he could take us back to the shuttle buses at the stadium. Much relieved, we accepted his offer and returned to find a shuttle that took us to our car in minutes. This experience reminded me of how our impatience can lead us to want to do things our way and without seeking out or waiting on God's direction. Yet God is faithful. God finds us in the midst of our struggles and invites us to come back to the path. 
The choice to do so is ours to make, however, and maybe and may not be what we had envisioned. But in the end, we will find the love and care of God's divine providence. So the thought for the day is, I will never get lost following God's way. I, I talked yesterday uh, a little bit in the sermon about what it means for us to wait upon God um, and that most of us are not really all that good at waiting. We're not good at waiting for things to happen in our lives. We're not good at waiting on others. Uh, we can get rather impatient with them, particularly when it's about our own agenda, um, about our own time, ab about how those things are, are used and appreciated. And so I want you to think a little bit about what it means for us to be patient, to be people who wait upon. Um, because when we wait upon, we might find some things happen in our lives uh, that actually the, the circumstance of them and the outcome of them is much easier than when, what they might have been if we'd have wandered off in impatience. Um, and to be reminded that sometimes our, our quick e and uh, fast decisions and our impatience will get us in trouble. And so what does it mean for us to be more patient and to wait, particularly to wait upon God? Especially if we think about what it means for us to be people who dwell in God's love and care, God's steadfast love and faithfulness, uh, to be reminded that God is for us and God is with us, that God is on our side. God isn't, God isn't, um, wanting for us to have to, you know, struggle all of life and, and always have bad things happening to us and find, uh, you know, that that's not God's will for us, pertain, you know, in particular. God is with us and God wants goodness in our lives and God wants love to reign supreme in our lives. And I believe that God is for us. Um, and that God is with us. And in the midst of all of what's going on, God is searching us out and God is finding us wherever we are. Even when we wander astray, what the image portrays to us is, is that God's love is going to pursue us. God's going to be after us, come to find us, even when we're walking away, wandering away and estranged. And to be reminded that there's not very far that you can go and the love of God isn't always already there. And there's not any place that you can go that the love of God can't reach you. So I want you to be reminded today that, that even though we get impatient and it feels like we get lost in our impatience, God's going to help us find the way. And that if we can wait upon God, God will show up in powerful, meaningful ways. And God's love and care will provide. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. Gracious God, as we face the trials of life, strengthen our faith and help us to feel your abiding love and peace. Teach us what it means to be patient and to wait upon you, even in the middle of these things. We pray this in Christ. Amen. Well, thanks, friends, for being here today. Great to see all of you. By the way, good morning, Uncle Bill. Glad that you are here. Good morning, Susan. I'm glad that you are here as well. It is great to see all of you, and I appreciate you hanging in there. Uh, once we conclude this Facebook post, feel free to share this on your own Facebook page. Maybe one of your family and friends will join in our devotion time. And if, again, if you're someone who watches this later, don't forget to leave your quick comments. Let me know that you were present today. Take an opportunity to pray for one another. I'm praying for you. I hope you'll pray for me. And then come and join us again tomorrow for devotion time. I'll look forward to seeing you then. I appreciate you being here today. And uh, God's rich grace and peace be upon you. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Thanks, friends.